This is our second video surrounding the endocrine system, and today we're going over Addison's disease and Cushing syndrome. These are two conditions that are directly impacted by the function of the adrenal glands. Let's take a step back and learn what the heck an adrenal gland is. I promise you guys, if you go back and study the core of nursing, the basics of each organ, gland, body system, etc., a lot of these conditions will make so much more sense. So let's look at the adrenal glands real quick. These are small triangular shaped glands that sit on the top of both kidneys. They produce certain hormones within each layer that help regulate several bodily functions. But some of the most important to know are your metabolism, your blood pressure, and your response to stress. We can narrow down the hormones that the adrenal glands produce by using the saying, salt, sugar, sex, the deeper you go, the better it gets. This shows that as you move down the layers of the adrenal cortex, steroid hormones that control salt, sugar, and sex are produced. The innermost layers of the adrenal gland is called the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla secretes hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine in response to stress. What causes me the most stress? Men. So I remember medulla, epinephrine, norepinephrine. We're looking at the first two layers of the adrenal cortex when we talk about Addison's disease and Cushing syndrome, because we're primarily focusing on aldosterone and cortisol, our steroid hormones. It is all about the steroids in this condition, so I want you to picture our cute little couple, Addison and Cushy Connor. Addison is our skinny, weak, tan girl, and Cushy Connor is our big, hairy, buff man. Addison's disease, or adrenal insufficiency, occurs when the adrenal glands do not produce enough steroid hormones, specifically cortisol and aldosterone. Now we know in a properly functioning adrenal gland, these hormones instruct nearly every tissue and organ in the body. Like we said before, cortisol helps the body respond to stress, maintains cardiac function, regulates blood sugar levels, and alters metabolism. And aldosterone regulates sodium and potassium in the body, which will affect your blood pressure. So when we have an adrenal gland that is not executing all of these normal functions, we experience Addison's disease, an absence of steroids or an absence in normal function that should very well be there. We can pretty much list all of our signs and symptoms of Addison's disease just by knowing the basic function of the adrenal gland. If we have an adrenal gland that is producing low amounts of steroid hormones, we will see low symptoms. Low blood pressure, low temperature, NCLEX tip, this means cold intolerance. Low sodium or hyponatremia, low blood sugar, low energy, low weight, and loss of body hair. There are two symptoms that ruin the low stride, and that is high pigmentation and high potassium or hyperkalemia. Remember, if sodium is low, potassium is high. NCLEX tip, anytime we mess with potassium, we must put these patients on cardiac monitors. Hyperkalemia can cause muscle spasms, peaked T waves, and ST elevation. To remember all of these symptoms, don't forget to picture Addison, our skinny, weak, tan girl. Now, why does this happen? Why would someone be diagnosed with Addison's disease? The most common cause of Addison's disease is an autoimmune response where the immune system attacks the adrenal cortex. And remember, the adrenal cortex is where cortisol and aldosterone are produced. Other causes include damage to the adrenal gland and damage to the pituitary gland. Now you're thinking, why the pituitary gland? That's all the way up in the brain. But the pituitary gland produces a hormone that stimulates the adrenal gland to make this cortisol. Remember, these are both glands part of the endocrine system, so if you mess with one, you mess with the other. Now, you've been diagnosed with Addison's, now how do you treat it? The whole problem with Addison's disease is an insufficiency of steroid hormones, specifically cortisol and aldosterone. So, if the body is not producing these hormones, a synthetic form of the steroid should be given. It's as simple as that, lifelong steroid therapy, which are medications ending in SOAN. Steroid replacement can be a little touchy, so it's incredibly important to be on the lookout for too much steroid replacement and too little steroid replacement by the patient. I'll go into detail about this later. We also want to treat the symptoms if possible. Addison is extremely skinny and weak, so as the nurse we encourage increased intake in proteins, carbs, and sodium. NCLEX tip, we want to teach the patient to increase sodium intake in hot weather and after exercise. And that's gonna do it for part one. Check out my other video for part two. 
I see you pausing this video, taking notes left and right. You don't need to do that. Everything you heard is available in study sheet form on my Etsy shop. Check it out. I love it. That's great. That's Woo! Fun. Yeah, like, subscribe, everything. Okay.